What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to build out this calendar for our app with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to build out this calendar. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, we're going to start to build out this calendar in this video. Now, we're creating a club website with events and venues and things where we need to schedule events and schedule venues and all that good stuff. So we need some sort of calendar to show the events that are coming up and all of that. And that's what we're going to start to build out here. Now, this doesn't look great. We're going to make this look much nicer. This is just the very basic functionality. We want to get this thing working and up and we'll make it look nice later on. So now you can see this is dynamic. We have our URL up here. I've got 2021 January. We can change this. We could type in, you know, March. And when we do, it updates here. It updates here. It shows March's actual calendar. And here it says three. That's for March. We'll get into why that's there later. And uh, all that good stuff. You know, we can change all of, you know, anything we want. Boom, June, and it works. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. That and a couple other little things. It's going to be a long video. We got a lot of stuff to get through, but it should be a pretty good one. So let's head back over here to our code. And we left off last time just creating this very basic web page, our home.html file. And before we get into this, I want to talk about this little brackety thing right here. This is our context dictionary. And this allows us to pass things from the back end onto the front end of the website. So we can do anything we want. We can come up here inside this function and I can create something called name and I could just type in John. And then down here, we can pass that variable into our web page, into the context dictionary right here, just by calling name and then passing in that variable. This thing right here is this thing right here. Now I could call this uh, first name if this is confusing. Uh, since they're both name, but this is what we'll then reference on the web page itself. So if we save this, head back over to our home.html file, instead of hello world, let's type in whatever that name is. So we do that with these double brackets. And inside of here, we can just pass name. And that's because I called this right here name. So if I, you know, call this first name, then over here, we would call this first name, right? So however you want to do that, that works. Generally, I tend to, you know, just put name, name, whatever this is going to be. I name it the same thing on this side, just because that kind of makes sense. So we can sort of do that, save this. Now, if we head back over here to our terminal, make sure it's running and it is not. Let's clear the screen and let's go Python manage.py run server. Anytime we want our app to work, we have to make sure the server is running in the terminal. Now we can head back over here and go back to our home page here and boom, it says, hello, John, right? So very cool and very easy way to add anything you want Pythonically from the back end to the front end, just like that. Now you can pass variables, you can pass lists, dictionaries, you can pass objects, I think anything you want, you can pass it in there and that's cool. So, okay, now let's talk about changing this to where if we go 2021 slash uh, June, a new page pops up with a calendar. We'll get to the calendar part in a bit. How do we get this to, you know, sort of parse this URL and do something? Well, let's head back over to our urls.py file. And now remember we have two urls.py file. We have the one that was originally created in our My Club website, and we have the one we created later in our events directory. And we always want to use the one in our events directory almost exclusively from here on out. So let me go ahead and create another one of these and comment this original one out. Now inside of here, we can use something called path converters. And to do that, we use these brackets and we want two of them because we want the year and then the month, right? And inside of here, I can use our path converters and there are three or four or five of them. And I'll talk about them in a second here, but I want to use integer year for the year. And here I want to use string month for the month. Now these things, are the path converters, right? The int and the str. And like I said, there are several of them. There is, let me just make a little list, uh, int, which is, you know, numbers. There are str, which are strings, words and things. There's uh, path, which is like uh, whole URLs and slashes. So something slash something slash something like that. 
there are slugs, and that's like um, hyphen and underscores stuff, <laughs> right? So if you have you know something long with several words and you want to break those up with either hyphens or underscores, you can use slug. And there's another one called uh, was it UID, which is a a universally unique uh, identifier, I think. Right. So like a, a username, like a user number five six eight two whatever. So these are our path converters. If you want to look it up and learn more about them, we're just interested in integer and string. And so this will you know translate into a year and a month. Now these variables we can then pass into our function and use them. And we're designating this one is going to be an integer, a whole number, and this one will be a string. It'll be a word like June or July, August, things like that. So okay, then nothing else changes. We want this still to point to our home views and we want to name this home. But now we want to be able to use these on the page. So let's go ahead and save this and head back over to our views.py. Now we need to pass these into this function here by passing year and month. Right. So now if we want to use these on the web page, well, first of all, let's save this and reload and just see here. Now we're at 2021 slash June. If we reload this, it goes back to our home page, which just says Hello John, which is very cool. Now notice we got rid of the original home page URL. So if we go back to our main site, it doesn't work. We'll fix that later. But for now, we just want to do it like this so we can get this calendar up and running. So now how do we use this date and month? inside of the page itself. Well, we can pass those into the context dictionary and we do it in the same way. So here's our context dictionary and you could put more than one thing in here. So we could put year and then this is going to be the year and we can put month and this is going to be the month, which is getting passed from this and this, right? So if we, I would stick a comma at the last one because if I add another thing on later and forget to put the comma, it throws up an error. So I just always do that. So if we go ahead and save this, now if we come back over to our home page here, we can use these here. So I'm just going to use our squiggly brackets and I'm going to call month. And then let me put a line break so it's not on the same line. And here we can call year. We save this, come back over here, hit reload, boom, June 21. Very cool. If we want to get fancy, we could put it maybe up here. So we could go, hello, John, events for, and then we could just call month and year. Now we can get rid of this, save this, come back over here, hit reload. Hello, John events for June 2021. We change this to January. You'll notice it's not working now because I've got a trailing slash right there. So uh, this one didn't have a trailing slash and it worked. If we put a trailing slash there, it won't work. So we need to head back over here. Let's fix that real quick. Head over to our URLs.py file. And here where we created this, right? We just put a slash at the end of it. Save this. Now it will work. I think that's probably a better way to do it anyway. Okay, so now that works. Like I said, now we can go to January. Boom. Very cool. So, okay, we've got these things that are being passed in. Now we want to do something with them, create a calendar based on this. And it's pretty simple to do that. There's a little bit of weirdness about it, but first we need to let's import calendar. And I always misspell this C A L E N D A R. And then we also want to from a calendar, we want to import HTML calendar. Right? I always want to put an A there, but it's cal E N D A R. So okay, this HTML calendar. Oh, we need a space there. There we go. This will create the actual calendar. But we also need calendar itself because we need to do some conversions. So what am I talking about? Well, right here, we're passing January, right? We, it's kind of harder to look up January. We, we might want to look up the number like one. February is the second month. It's two. March is three. So we need to sort of convert that into a number before we can really throw up a calendar. I guess you could probably do it without, but it's just a good idea to change this anyway. So we're going to. And to do that, let's come down here. And let's comment convert month from name to number. So let's create a variable. I'm going to call it month underscore number. And this is going to be a list. 
and we're going to call calendar dot month underscore name, which is a part of calendar. And then we want to call index and then we want to pass in month, right? So this will this will convert this hopefully to the month number and we can confirm this by printing this out onto the web page. So let's go month number. Now this may not work. Stick our comma on here. Let's go ahead and see. Let's head over to our home page. And down here, let's just print this month number out. And you don't have to put spaces around here, but I always do because it looks nicer. So now if we come back here and reload, probably gonna, oh no, it worked. So one. And then January, we need February. It's hard to spell, two. Now, what about lowercase? So March, it throws an error, right? So this has to be uppercase or you need to convert it to uppercase. And I think we could do that pretty easily. Let's head back over to our code. And right here, let's go um, month equals month dot title. This will convert it to an uppercase. It'll titleize it, right? Uh, let's go ahead and save this. Come back over here. Try this March. Now that works, shows three. If we do uppercase now, it still shows three, right? So however you want to do that. Now, I think, is there maybe a capitalize as well? Capitalize, I think maybe that might work too. Let's try this again. Let's go April. Yeah, so that'll work too. Capitalize or title, whichever. So capitalize is probably better. Titleize will uppercase every single word. So if there's more than one word here, it'll uppercase them all, but it should only be one word. So, okay, so now we have this number. Now we can pass it to the calendar thing to uh, create our calendar. But before we do that, we need to make sure that this number is an actual number, right? So let's go month number equals integer month underscore number. This will convert it to an integer, make sure it's an absolute integer because it could be a string and we're not quite sure. Just we wanna be sure, so we'll make it an integer. So now let's uh, create calendar. And to do that, I'm going to create a variable called cal, short for calendar. And this is going to be an HTML calendar. There we go. And then we can format month. We want to pass in the year and the month number. Right? If we want to put these on other lines so that we can read it easier. There we go. So this year is coming from here. This month number is coming from here. Now we may have to change year to an integer as well, but we called this an integer back in the urls.py file, so it's probably okay. So now we could just pass this calendar into our context dictionary, like we always do. So cal, boom, cal, slap a comma on there, save this, head back over to our homepage, and instead of this month number here, let's put cal, save this, reload it, see what we got here. Boom, we've got HTML that if you kind of look at it closely, you can see there it says Sunday, uh, there it says Wednesday. So this is definitely the calendar, but it's not processing the HTML, it's just spitting out the HTML. And the reason why it's doing that is because the Django template language, which is the thing that allows us to pass variables and things, will automatically sort of make HTML safe by not rendering it. Because a lot of times, think if you've got a blog or something and somebody puts a comment, they could inject malicious code into the comment. And this is sort of a safeguard against that. But in our case, we're the ones creating it, so we know we're not injecting anything, so we need to turn this off, and so to speak. And to do that, we just head back over here, and we use a filter, and I'm gonna use safe. Now, we haven't talked about filters, but Django template language has a lot of filters that allow you to do all kinds of cool things. We'll get into all those more in detail later. I don't really wanna talk about it in this video because we're working on the calendar here. But one of those filters is safe and it will make your HTML safe. It will render the HTML. So if we save this, come back over here and hit reload, boom, we have our calendar. Now this is kind of wonky. Let me center this just because, you know, and we're gonna change the HTML and make this look good with CSS and stuff later on. But for now, let's just center this, save this, reload it, boom. There we go. So April 2021. Hello, John. Events for April. If we change this to January. Hello, John. Events for January 2021. And there it is. You can see this is the January calendar. Look at the shape of it. There are one, two, three dates right here. 
If we move to February, boom, the first line is a whole bunch of things. That's because every month the, this you know shape of a calendar changes based on what days fall in that month and stuff. So we're getting the correct current updated date in these calendars, which is very cool. We could, you know, go back to 2020. Now this February calendar looks much different. We could go uh, 2025, right? It's got them all in there. This is, calendar thing is built into Python and it just works and it's really cool. So we've got a calendar. We can do other calendary things really quickly if we wanted to, for instance, I don't know, put the, the year of the actual year on our website for like a copyright thing, copyright C 2021 or something like that. We could do that. We could go from date time, import date time. And then down here we could, let's sort of uh, get current year. We could create a now variable and I'm going to set that equal to date time dot now. This will give us the current date stuff, right? And let's call current underscore year and set that equal to now dot year, right? Now we can pass this into our context dictionary if we want down here. Boom, current year is current year, comma. And we can come back here and let's put a few line breaks. I don't know, that's probably fine. And inside of here, we could just pass in the current year. So, or if we wanted to say copyright C, <laughs> right? 2021, save this, come back over here, hit reload. Boom, copyright C, 2021. We could put the time if we wanted to, right? I don't know why you would want to, but maybe we want the time. Uh, up here, maybe we could put uh, as of, and then the time, I don't know, let's put a couple of line breaks here. So we come back over here and let's uh, get current time. So I'm gonna call this time, set it equal to now.strf time. And if you've ever worked with Python time stuff, you know that you can pass in these weird sort of placeholders. So percentage I stands for hour internationally. So at three o'clock in the afternoon, this will be three instead of 15 o'clock. If you want 15 o'clock, you put H, right? But I want it to say three o'clock. Uh, then we can do like the, the minutes, so that's M. And then we could also do like the seconds, so that's S. And I can also put like AM or PM by putting P in there, right? So now we could sort of just pass this into our context dictionary. So boom, time and time, comma, go ahead and save it come back over here as of, we could pass in the time. So say this, reload, as of 8.20 and 13 seconds AM. So maybe we don't need the seconds on there. It's kind of a little weird. So we could just take off the S part here. Whatever you like. We're just playing around at this point. Save this, reload, as of 8.20 AM, here's the calendar. Very cool. And we're doing some pretty dynamic stuff right off the bat. We've got updating times on our website. Every time we hit reload, if we wait a little bit, a minute or so, this will change. If we hit reload, it hasn't yet. We've got the updating date here. So if a year goes by, this copyright thing will change to 2022 because that will be the current date, the current year. So we don't have to come back here every year and change the copyright thing on the bottom of every page of our website. We've got this calendar to where if we change a month, boom, we get a different month. And it doesn't do anything yet and it looks kind of stupid, but like I said, we're gonna make this look much better with HTML. If we right click and view the page source, we can see here's all that HTML that was getting passed. We can use CSS to style this HTML any way we want. We'll do that soon uh, and it's be fairly trivial, but uh, very, very cool and very quick. And uh, we're moving right along. So I hope you enjoyed this Django Wednesday. If this is moving a little too slow to you, check out codemy.com. I've got like five or six or seven courses on Django if you want to take any of those. A total membership discount I'll mention in just a second. But you know all about that and uh, that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So it pay just $49 to access all my courses 
over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. You and over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodingView.com, and I'll see you in the next video.